Hello, I am Oatmeal. Welcome to another spoiler review of Star Trek Picard Season 3, Episode 4 No Win Scenario. I love this episode. I do. Every episode is getting better. Only thing I didn't like was the editing. Last 10 minutes or so, there's a few things. Not necessarily like wrong, uh, just questionable from my perspective. I was like, what kind of. What kind of editing is this? Is, is this? Are you trying to make some kind of music video or something? I mean, it's like, I guess it's okay because of the kind of uh, vibe you're trying to uh, create with this. Because I felt like I was um, in a different kind of genre kind of thing. Not necessarily uh, wrong, but it was just a little bit... Um, unexpected like it didn't go with the the rest of the episode kind of thing it just kind of kind of uh struck me there was a, just a few a few points uh or i'm not really sure if if it was a maybe it was a bad uh copy of the episode that i got or maybe it was just a bad edit uh, but other than that i um really like the characters and let me show you uh the highlights of this episode. This episode begins with Picard at a bar. These people come, students. They're like, what are your greatest adventures? They have specific questions, including the one time, uh, one of the last episodes of season seven, where he's hanging out with these aliens that only talk in metaphor. And he had to say something. He had to do, like, he had to go uh, do a ritual thing with this other alien guy on a planet, and he had to say these weird things like, How does it go again? And stab the the dragon, because it's something that happened in, in their history, and they can only talk in metaphor or whatever. And if you look in the in the background, Jack is is back there the whole time. Like, you can actually see him. I love you. But I'm trying to eat my lunch. <laughs> I thought you were a robot. You know what I to eat. Oh, you got that wrong. But Data said. Never mind, Data. Data's my pet now. Present day. They're in a no-win situation. They're falling from heaven. They're running out of options. Riker's talking to everybody about what they can do. Riker gives up as the captain. It's in a book. Reading Rainbow. There's the dot of Laval button. And, uh, the guy with the, what do you call it, glasses? Lafork. Lafork? No, Laforge. So, uh, they only got a few hours to live. Unzakalaga. It reminds me of Power Rangers, the movie, when they hop into the Zords. Riker goes see Picard and says, you know, you're right. We should have fought. But, you know, you should go and talk to your son and get that all figured out before you die, as we all die, because we're all going to die. So they have a heart to heart. No win. Meanwhile, James Bond, 7-Eleven, is out there. She's trying to find the safe sifter. Where is the safe sifter? Well, you got to go get the pot of gold. You got to... Go get the honey pot. Go try to um, get the uh, safe sift to come out to you. That's what the uh, the the captain said. The other captain in his quarters, like, yeah, you gotta go do that. You gotta go, you gotta go get them out. Go get them to, you know, they're gonna. They they, they like to um, live in a pot, almost like Winnie the Pooh. So I'm not that kind of, you know, not the kind that you smoke. Cause I'm not allowed to talk about that on YouTube. Uh, they del they del delete my video. Not important, um, because they're about to die. They're gonna they're about to be deleted. So she's trying to draw them out, tr trying to draw out the sheep sifter. Ooh, scary little sheep sifter. Come out and play with seven. I don't have big boobs anymore, but I'm still pretty feisty as an older woman. Yeah, I'm a milf. I bring all the shapeshifters to the yard. Here comes Picard. Hey, Bev. I'm gonna take my son to the hall, dog. This is the part where Picard... I mean, no, it's Seven. 
oh, you know, this guy, he has like a knife in his hand. Is he going to do something to himself? Riker's trying to write a love letter, I mean, an audio to his wife, to his wife, Deanna. So Will is like, hey, how are we able to, like, be in the holodeck, the first reality world, you know, the metaphors of Facebook? How are we able to do this? Because, like, well, there's an independent, like, uh, power supply for this, and it's there in this event so that people can come in and have a good time while the, while the spaceship blows up. And Will's like, oh my god. And, uh, Picard's talking about a story, and it sounds like Will already heard the story about his life, something that happened long time long time ago and he's like oh I'm stealing a ship and I'm doing this thing and then I'm hanging out with these girls and Will's like oh you're doing that to uh to get laid and Picard's like no nah, we can't uh yes but like we're we, we had permission you see you see what I'm you know what I mean and uh you know I would have I would have named you Will too because that was the name of Crusher's former Husband, Will, Will Crusher. And, you know, he was my friend. Yeah, he was my friend. So I would have named him, named you, Will. And, you know, I want to know, why, uh, why didn't we meet? Why did, I mean, why did you never, like, try to be part of my life? And that was the question that he didn't answer. You find out later it's because he did. He did and he was there five years ago at the bar. So far away. Whatever, you know, like wherever they were, you know, like he was there and, you know, he asked that question to him and he didn't know that was his son. So they have a pretty good conversation, but it was more like, uh, a meaningful conversation that that um that Picard needed more than Will. And so here's Seven talking to talking to the captain and trying to find the ship ship for the yeah. Meanwhile, this is the part where the the bad bad lady she cuts off her her hand right here to talk to this creature that comes out. It's almost like uh Snoke from the sequel series. Uh, a sequel trilogy, I mean. What do I know? And the weird monster thing tells her uh, to engage, even though it's very dangerous to go go that direction. And then her hand comes back somehow. And uh, back to the flashback, Picard talking to them, and they're all, like, stoked, like, Wow, you're the legend. You're the legend, Picard. He's bright. Now you're a robot. Oh, this is like before he became a robot. So he's still a person. And uh, back to the present day. Talking to his son on the holodeck. Other people join. Meanwhile, Seven is like going after the, the blob. And uh, Crusher is, is recognizing... Something about the every time we uh, they would they would get um, blasted by the uh, the nebula ne neb nebula the nebula thing the thing that they're falling into like almost like a black hole or something. It's like she realized there was some kind of pattern going on, and she was like, "What's up with that? Like some kind of pattern? Like I think it's having birth, and it's gonna give birth to to the space." Uh, octopuses or uh, squids and we gotta do it we gotta try this we gotta ride the wave of uh, you know like electrical waves of the nebula and Riker's like oh no it's it's dangerous but if we don't then we're gonna die anyways we gotta work together and that's that's what Picard was telling the the, the guys at the at the bar five years ago if you work together, you can do things that you would never ever imagine that you could do any other way. You gotta trust each other, and that's the secret, that's the key. So, 
So um, one of the interesting things that this guy gave, um, uh, one of the stories that he gave that was, was very intriguing was that he died. I mean, almost died. His His entire, like, he was on a spaceship one time, a long time ago. And Picard was a Borg at that time and, like, destroyed his ship. And he escaped with, like, ten other people in a, a little pod, almost like the same pod that uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 is on in A New Hope in Star Wars. You 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 know, you jump in and you escape and the captain picked him, you know, back when he was a boy. He had experience doing uh, this kind of work. And he was like a nobody, a nobody from Chicago, kind of like, just like Tim Pool. So he's basically Tim Pool from Chicago. And uh, <laughs> I thought that was uh, really, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know, really interesting. I mean, when I think about that, it's Tim Pool. It's Tim Pool from Chicago. And, uh, they're they're gonna like hot wire the the spaceship. It's almost like home improvement with Tim Allen all over again. I apologize for my appearance. I really don't like the way that I look. But when the whole world is blowing up, when the whole universe is blowing up, it's almost like it doesn't even matter. I mean, like think about that. Seven is like we need our help. You little grease monkey. You little grease monkey. I used to be called a monkey. Ugly monkey and ugly mouse. In, in Vietnam. But you know what the guy said? He's like, give me five minutes. I mean, it's like, we're all going to die. And what? You need five minutes to what? Change your clothes? Who cares? <laughs> you don't need to do that. What are you doing? So, uh, so he's doing that, and, uh, and they're all, um, on the bridge, and Riker's like, hey, Picard, you had experience flying blind before in space, so you gotta be the captain here, you gotta fly us, and Picard's like, okay, all right, everybody, good luck, engage, just like the good old days. And then they're like dodging <laughs> rocks. And uh, they're getting in position. And then it looks like the black girl is here. But it's not. Because she's like, I don't know what to do. What? You want something? You you want something? And then he doesn't know. He doesn't like, he doesn't know. But she's like, she realizes, hey, you don't even know my name. You call me by my other name? You got you gotta you know you got you gotta call me nine seven oh nine commander nine because that's what you called me last time last time you did she's like what what what's your name what's my name what do you call me what's my name say my name damn it no you're fake boom zap go on wow good work I'm right all right we'll get in position. We gotta, we gotta time it right. We gotta go 88 miles per hour to get this time machine to work. Ready on my mark. Ready. We gotta dodge this rock. We go round. Yeah. Easy does it. There's a bald chick. Why is he bald? Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, he had a serious question like, uh, Will's like, hey, Picard. When did you start going bald? And he's like, uh, how old are you? 22, 23? Well, you better enjoy it while you still can. That was kind of a dumb answer. Because you don't you don't really need to be bald in the future. But anyways, uh, they were able to ride the the wave, the space wave. They were able to ride, ride and it, it um, re-energized their space. They, they lost, um, like they had a, drain like they had to turn off life support and then it was almost like they're all gonna die within minutes but it all worked out in the end because when they when they rode on the on the space wave 
the space wave was like an electrical current that uh, was able to uh, recharge their batteries like almost like the spaceship was a a phone and they were able to open up their ports almost like a USB port and able to recharge their batteries from the space wave and out of the space wave out of the nebula was this lady well this lady was coming after them but uh, Riker was able to uh, throw a rock at her and that uh that caused her to uh, pray, I guess. And, uh, and then they looked out and they see these weird creatures. And Elms reminded me of something I saw in Star Wars uh, Rebels. Star Wars Rebels. And they saw like space whales or something. And uh, it's kind of like that. It's almost got a little cartoony because I think you can kind of see eyeballs. I think that's a little bit too much. But uh, but it was kind of magical to see that. Even though they kind of have eyeballs, it was kind of weird. But I guess it's it's okay. And they might be a little bit too small. I would imagine they should be like a lot bigger than this. But this is still pretty big if you think about it. And uh, they kind of look transparent. But I guess that's okay. And uh, this girl, maybe... Maybe sees a bad guy. That might be. That would make sense. But I don't know that. Because I haven't seen the other episodes yet. Uh, so they're happy. And they're hugging. Hugging it out. But he's not happy. And then right, uh, Picard. Picard realizes that back five years ago. When he's talking to them. There's that guy in the hat. Yep. It was Will. His son. And he's like, didn't you have any any family, you know, outside of this? Outside of this Star Trek stuff? He's like, no. Starfleet's the only family I ever need. And Will's like, okay, I'm out of here. He didn't say it. He just left. He disappeared. And, uh, you know, next, se next thing you know, he's gone. And he looked and he's no longer there. And, and he realized, yeah. That was my son. And Riker is talking to Deanna, his wife. And they have a good conversation. And Riker's like, you know, I'm sorry about everything in the past. And I'll try to make it right. And, you know, sometimes apologies are not good. Uh, in some situations, especially if the other side is just um, trying to bait you. Bait and Swiss or something. And they don't care if you apologize or not. Even if you apologize, they'll just uh, move the uh, the goalpost or something. And uh, they'll try to make you say sorry about something else. And they'll keep on trying to get you to apologize again and again for the same thing, for different things. Whatever the case might be, sometimes it's not a good idea to apologize. It's not going to. But, you know... Sometimes it's good to, it's like, I mean, I guess for the most part, it's like you can't apologize for things you did wrong if you did something wrong or something. And, and that's what Riker was doing. And I thought this was like a bit of a moment, their conversation going back and forth. And it was good. And uh, I was happy about that. And another another good thing is Picard did his log at the end of this episode which is what he did in the show next generation i don't know if he did it in the movies they made four movies generation first contact uh uh well the last one was nemesis the one before that was uh what was it called something about these Weird, ugly aliens wanting to live forever. What would that be called? And uh, I, I don't know what exactly if he did it then in those movies, but he did it in the show a lot of times. He had a little, little journal, his little diary, his little log, like a blog, uh, a vlog, like a video, uh, audio, podcast. So P Picard would keep his 
podcast thing. His little audio journal. And uh, he did it at the end of this. And I thought that was good. Good thing. And uh, and th- I mean this is like. This is the part that had um, some weird um, editing issues I thought. Where they're doing this weird thing where he's like. He's seeing things or something, and and then he hears these voices of like, it's saying like, "Find me, find me, like find who, I don't know." And then there's the original score at the end, um, after, after the first song, and uh, and I, I like that. I'm a big fan of that. I thought that was good, and um, I like the direction this is going, going in. Uh, so I think there is some good things happening, and uh, you know I'm just I'm just an oatmeal guy. I'm just trying to uh, figure this out. Uh, I'm not I'm not red red letter media. I'm not Riss Evans. I'm sorry, um, but uh, I'd be happy to play him someday. Not that I would want to look like him, but I uh, mean, look at me. But actually, I'm not this fat. I, I might be, but I think it's the video is making my face go wide but um they had to go wide too Picard and his friends yeah they had to go wide and stress themselves and work together and trust each other and that's what made it made it work and that's what you gotta do when they go and get stuff and um I really can't really I, can re- I really can't criticize the the acting or the story just the editing here and there. A few weird editing uh, decisions. I'll criticize that. I don't have the details right now. I mean, I could show you, but I um, don't want to get copyright. Uh, copyright, you know? Even though it's very used. Anyways, uh, it was a good episode. Right. And sometimes. What you say will be used against you. And will hurt you. And I know that. Um, Like I kind of know that. I talked about that. Now there could be. Terrible things. um, In store for me oatmeal. Because of. uh, We don't have time to talk about that right now. But seriously like Picard. Said some things. And that hurt Will. And that caused Will not to. uh, Pursue a relationship with. Picard, had he, had he, um, not said that, Will would have been in the first two seasons, oh my, that's too bad, and so, sometimes when you think you're just saying something harmless, like, when I go with a girl or dog, or ugly, oh no, you actually look like Natalie Portman, take me back, Jeanette. Jeanette Whitaker, just kidding. Am I kidding? What am I saying? Please stop watching my video about, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson, I'm for real. That has over 50,000 views on TikTok. But it's a terrible video. And then they took down my, my video that talked about beards. It was actually just a 20 second video. That TikTok removed. The video had three people. One of them was Owen Sawyer. Uh, Info was Alex Jones. I hope saying these words do not uh, get this video flagged. It's possible. What what can I say? I'm like a spaceship and I have to go down with the ship. With the Titanic. and, uh, And then in the end. Maybe I'll come back. Stronger and better than before with space whales and space squids. And it's all right. It's all right. Because when you're itty bitty, it's okay. Especially if you have a karaoke machine that we must have got in 94 or 95. Then you can play some weird owl songs. Be weird and freaky. No, I don't, I don't know what that meant, I'm sorry. 
got to disappear on me. So, TikTok removed that beard video. It was called Just a Beard. I uploaded it to YouTube and Twitter. It's all right. TikTok is worse than YouTube, who deleted my 10,000 plus videos. YouTube did that. YouTube removed them. It devastates me. It's like, you know what my YouTube videos are? It's like, they're my will. They're my will to survive. They're my will. My will crusher. My will Picard. It's all I got. It's all I know. Kiss me. I'm too young to die. Too young. Am I? It's hurting. So please don't tell. No, is it? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't want to go and get tough. The tough gets going. Do you have? Do you have what you need? I'm happy about these episodes. And so when I'm watching this, I'm taking it in. Because it's like five movies. It's like five movies. And it's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy this. Well, I still can. Uh, Gary at Neurotic Matt Burratt. That this might be the last good Star Trek we ever get. Outside of like fan films. You still got that. I'm right. Anyways, I'm Omil Giuliano. You can like me. Follow me. At Juliano VN on social media. I'm everywhere. I do a daily blog. Till next time, kids. Uh, eat your oatmeal. Ha ha ha.